On this edition of the NFL End Zone, we'll be recapping all the games that took place in Week 14, as well as discussing Week 15's matchups, as well as predictions. Without further ado, gentlemen, let's get this thing started. And we got a new venue. We'll tell you more about it coming up on this edition of the NFL End Zone. What's happening, everyone? Welcome to NFL End Zone, where the football season never ends. I'm your host, Marcus Young, Gina Jenkins. I'm Michael Riley. And I'm Luke Hartley. With that being said, we definitely want to give a huge shout out to our proud partner and our new venue, Stonewall Pizza, 1008 Mass Street, here in beautiful, lovely Lawrence, Kansas. Yes, Wednesday sir. specials, half price, and all the pies. And I'm going to tell you guys, personal experience. That pizza, I'm trying to tell you, you cannot be it anywhere else. Fire. Fire. Ingredients, fresh, guaranteed always. Love this place. Hashtag. Hashtag that. <laughs> Beer on tap, Coke products, the whole nine yards. I'm telling you, it's definitely worth the trip. Whether you live here in Lawrence, also, if you go to KU and you go to Haskell on Mondays, there's also student discounts as well. So come check us out Wednesdays and also be a part of the podcast. Why not? Good pizza, good environment, talk a little football, let's get it in. With that being said, we're going to start things off. We're going to talk about the excuse me, the games that took place in week 14. We're going to talk about the first recap, and that is going to be the Oakland Raiders against the Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs would be victorious in this matchup by a score of 26-15. to 15. Once that, I want to point out to you gentlemen, they shut down the Oakland Raiders for three quarters. They would score the Oakland Raiders their 15 points all in the fourth quarter. Alex Smith would uh, go on a, a solid uh, performance, uh, 20 of 34 in passing attempts, 268 yards, as well as the INT. No passing touchdowns in this matchup. Uh, cash rules everything around me. Kareem, get the money. Kareem Hunt would go 25 rushes for like 116 like yards. You gotta give it to one, <laughs> one touchdown as well. Mr. Tyree Hill also four catches, 75 yards. The Kansas City Chiefs would also have 408 total offensive yards as well as 23 first downs. Um, we're going to start with you, Mike. How would you break down this matchup? Well, the Chiefs came with an executed game plan for the first part of the three parts of the quarter. Then the last quarter, they let the foot on the gas. But that's not here or there. Their losing streak is over. They finally was able to get the job done. They was aggressive, and they was aggressive on defense as well. Offensively, they came out, ran the ball effectively, and got some good completions going. Got Travis Kelsey involved early in the passing game, as well as Kareem Hunt involved with the passing game to go along with the running game. And they finally started finding a way to get Tyreek Hill like they did the first five games of the season. They got him involved in the passing game as well. Little jet sweeps here and there, not too fancy. They just stuck with the game plan and took advantage of it. And the defense played well, forcing Oakland to get three and outs and, and all that. And the special teams came to play. So overall, good execution. Special teams, offense, and defense, that's what won in the game. That's my point. To me. Oh, you just touched on it. getting Kareem Hunt back in the action there. You noticed a couple of games ago, he, uh, I think he had like 11 carries and 17 yards. I can't remember the opponent who that was, but, uh, Getting him back on track, getting that at an early lead. The Chiefs, they, they've been falling behind too early, too often in uh, that four-game losing streak. They're, uh, they're not a built – there are very few teams in the league that are, that are built to come from behind. And, and with that said, the Chiefs certainly are not one of the teams. They're a play-from-ahead team. Um, I'd like to see a little bit better in the red zone, a little too much butter, a little too many field goals. But they were able to uh, – they were to stay on their own in the field. They, have, they, they had good field position, not great, took advantage. 
Got up points, you like to see more touchdowns, but he's going to get that lead, extend that lead. That, that's what he got to do going forward. And we're also getting to the point to where we're playing for the playoff, and you have to score touchdowns instead of field goals, because field goals don't win the game. So we're getting to that playoff one mentality to where the touchdowns are matter. Huge win for the Chiefs. They, yeah, they, 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 they could not be welcome in the Chargers this upcoming Saturday on a five game losing streak. I don't care if the game's at Arrowhead or not. They, they, they have a, a, at least a, a scotch of that swag bag, and they're still in first place. They're at home Saturday night. They have that streak in, and it's, it's go time from here on out. I agree. So, once again, like you just mentioned, Luke, a huge win for the Chiefs. Last win by the Kansas City Chiefs over the point this out October 30th. That was the last time they won. That's almost two Monday months. Night against the almost two months. Day before Halloween. So this is definitely a must-have win for them. So I also want to mention also stay at least tied for first place in the AFC West. Uh, the second matchup that we're going to talk about, uh, I'm going to go into the Minnesota Vikings and the Carolina Panthers. Uh, the Panthers will improve to 9-4 and four on the season by defeating the Vikings by a score of 31-24 to 24 in that matchup. Cam Newton would have 137 yards and one touchdown. Um, Case Keenum in a losing effort for the Vikings. Uh, he would have 268 passing yards, uh, unfortunately, in a losing effort. Um, the Carolina Panthers would also, uh, they're still second in the NFC South. Luke, I'm going to start with you on this one. How would you break down this match? Uh, about what I expected it to be. Uh, the game at Carolina. Carolina is, uh, with the Saints losing Thursday night to the Falcons, now with a tie with the Saints. Albany got swept by New Orleans, thinking they'll help down the stretch here. But, uh, but big time win, big big time win for the uh, the Panthers. Uh, the, the, with the Eagles getting a, you know a win this past weekend as well, Vikings have lost their uh, st still in that number two hole. They don't have home field anymore. But uh, no, the Panthers uh, a lot of similarities with the uh, with, with the Chiefs and the Panthers. They uh, ain't neither team really built to come from behind. They got Jonathan Stewart going in that big breakaway touchdown first quarter. Uh, Cam Newton had a near breakaway run that pretty much iced the game with the lead already. And uh, I was actually kind of surprised that the Vikings came back from 11 down to tie it up. But uh, the Panthers did, did – uh, it wasn't an A-plus game. It was probably an A-minus game. But they did. They, they couldn't play much better. I agree. Uh, the Panthers had a well-executed game plan. They needed this win to stay in the race for the NFC South Division, being two games behind against the Saints. Even though the Saints lost to the Falcons, this was still a big win for them. The Panthers was able to take advantage of the Vikings defense because the Vikings defense is one of the best in the league and they attacked him by running the ball to kept beating John Stewart and also getting Chris McCaffrey on the ball. And Chris McCaffrey is a deadly weapon in the past game too. You can line him in the backfield, you can line him outside, you can line him inside the slot, you can do whatever with him. The, the Panthers was able to find a way to utilize him as well. So that Slow start, but he's really come on strong for him down the stretch. Exactly. So he's starting to find his groove and the defense. They play well in the first part of the game, but they let the Vikings come back. But they were able to finish off and get the win and get a key stop on that. But the Vikings, they had their chances to get the win, but they fell short like the execution. And as well as on third downs, they didn't make enough third down plays. On offense, defense was gassed by the running game. They couldn't stop the run. They had them on their heels, and they got beaten the pass game as well. Gave a big touchdown play to Funches to pretty much ice the game and uh, gave up a long run as well. The 62 yard with Cam Newton that pretty much sealed the deal for them to win. But the Vikings has to go back to the drawing board. They need to be better, stop the run on defense. In the secondary, it has to play a little bit better. If they can work on those fundamental things, they can keep rolling and possibly catch the Eagles for the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. A big pickup win, once again, the Carolina Panthers are, uh, have improved to 94 on the year, once again, by defeating the Minnesota Vikings by score, once again, 30 on the 24. Uh, we're going to jump into the third matchup, and that is the LA Rams taking on. The Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, the Eagles will win this game by a score of 43 to 35 and move to 11 and 2 on the year after that win. Um, kicker Jake Elliott would give Philadelphia the league in the fourth quarter um, with a 33 yard field goal, which would bring them up by 37 to 35. And then tell me about this play just to, just to make things a lot worse. The last minute fumble recovery for a touchdown by Brandon Ingram was pretty much just put the cherry on top of a huge comeback by the Philadelphia Eagles as well. Carson Winston would have a great game, 291 yards as well as four touchdowns. However, gentlemen, unfortunately, of course, 
they would lose him to an ACL tear as well. So that could definitely put a huge, huge fork in their season uh, moving forward. And I was, what a better time. I was rooting for Carson Wentz to have a big season, but you hate to see injuries like this. This is part of football. But it was like a non-contact movement, but you still hate to see him go down with an ACL injury. He was coming to his home. He had a stellar season. He was completing 70% of his passes, and he was just balling, and the team was just rally around him. But with that loss, they have a backup quarterback in Nick Foles, who also started for the Eagles back uh, three or four years ago and with success as well. So they had confidence in him. He led the way, especially on the key third down where you normally run it and let the defense uh, stop the other offense to win. But they had a gutsy call. They went for a pass play. They got the first down, and that was all she wrote. That was game, seal, and match for the Philadelphia Eagles. The defense was getting after the Los Angeles Rams offense. They was putting a lot of pressure on him. And Carson, not excuse me, but Jared Goff at times didn't know what to do in the pocket since they had that relentless pressure and that blitz. And the secondary could do a lot better because they gave up some big gaping chunk plays for yards as well as touchdowns. But overall, the Eagles came and executed. They did their job with a costly injury to Carson Wentz. Well, I still expect the Eagles to make some noise in the playoffs with Nick Foles leading the way as the quarterback for their Rams. They had a shaky start, especially on offense. They was able to get a couple of drives here and there, and then they were left out the island. Then they was able to refocus and score some points. But at the end, it wasn't enough, and the key turnover pretty much cost them the game. And the defense could play a lot better because after, uh, after they gave up the first touchdown, they gave up back-to-back -back drives for touchdowns. So that's something they need to work on going forward. But you have a defensive coordinator like in Wade Phillips who can change that, who can fix their mistakes going forward. But overall, it was a good game, but the Rams fell short in this victory. Who's uh, lost for the Eagles, uh, excuse me, for the Rams? Uh, what do you think of that fourth quarter letdown by the, Eagles, by the Rams, excuse me, that were leading late into the game and just those two back to back field goals, number one by Jake uh, Elliott, and then of course, once they had. Uh, uh, it's a classic case of a uh, young team learning how to win. They, uh, they, they, they've had a couple of chances here they, uh, to really have a pass into the torch game, for lack of a better term. Um, they they, they kind of got uh, humiliated against the Vikings, uh, kind of, you know, safe face against the Saints winning that game at home. And uh, it's just, uh, it's just the, the ebb and flow of a young team trying to win. They, uh, they have a very... Uh, Important game coming up for Sunday at the Emerald City of Seattle. Uh, potential passing of the torch game from uh, Goliath to another potential Goliath. Um, as, as far as the Eagles Rams matchup in general goes, kind of feel like as sports fans, we've seen this before Philadelphia and LA, uh, Sixers, Lakers, uh, Carson Wentz playing the role of Dr. J, and you got, you know, Jeff Goff coming in as a version of Magic Johnson. We've seen, I feel like as sports fans, we've seen this before. Um, it could be the NFC's uh, answer to uh, Manning and Brady going forward. Um, I think it's about other pretty good quarterbacks up there in the NFC. Uh, Breeze, we don't know how much time he has left. Uh, Wilson in his prime. Rogers been in the league for a minute now. But you, you got who was it, the one and two picks in the same draft class in the same conference. If they can get some playoff games, won't happen this year due to the injury. But it's a, a r r could be the potential budding robbery between these two that, quite frankly, a month or even less to go ago, we never saw that coming. I would absolutely agree. This is definitely a great game. Um, once, uh, once again, like you mentioned, this could definitely be one of those great rivalries, potentially in the future, uh, between the Rams and the Eagles. I, I, well, one more note on that game. I think Nick Foles, he's probably the best back quarterback the league has seen since Frank Wright. Kind of showing my age here, but he had that big time win for the Chiefs last year when uh, Smith was out for a game or two. He was a quarterback for the Eagles when uh, I believe Chip Kelly's virtual when he got in the playoffs. I think he was his 27 and 2 year, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, he. he he, he's one of the all-time best backups in the league, and that's nothing to be so short on. Absolutely. A huge win once again for the Eagles. With that being said, we're going to jump into the fourth and final recap, and that is the Ravens against the Steelers moving forward. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers will pick up a one-point win by a score of 39-38 in that matchup. Um, they will improve, or they will win, or excuse me, the Ravens are 19-7 in the fourth quarter. They would outscore 
uh, Ravens in that game. Big Ben. That's all I can say, Dan. Big Ben. The killer stupid. bees. Stupid in this game. Mm -hmm. Big Ben. Yeah, Big Ben, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, the killer bees. 44 of 66 for 506 yards and four touchdowns. Ball. That's that's pretty much all I can say in that matchup. I mean, what what else could you really talk about in that game besides Big Ben? With Big Ben, I mean, we've seen him throw up stats like this before, but it seems like in a way we haven't seen something like this in quite some time, and it seems like it's starting to show up at the right time as we reach into the playoffs. Uh, over over the last ten years, this has been pretty much the robbery in the NFL, and uh, Sunday night was no disappointment to that. Uh, if you would have told me that the Steelers would have had a one point win, I would have guessed like twenty to nineteen, something like that. Um, up fourteen to nothing, then down thirty one twenty, then they traded the stick. got the lead, lost it again. Keep the eventual game winning field goal. A little concerned about that two minute offense, man. Even though they were able to pull out the win, they, they, they had everything stacked for them to be kicking the field goal as time expired. They gave the ball back to Baltimore with up to 40 seconds to go in a timeout, only needing a field goal, that, which they could obviously couldn't get in the position to do. But uh, outside of that, a pretty phenomenal game for them. They like, like to see a little bit better two minute coaching there. Too many incomplete passes when you're already in field goal territory. Uh, going back to that Saints game, up mentioned, uh, they were also down three inside of two minutes to go. Field goal range got picked in the end zone, so uh, Steelers they got away with one. I agree. The Steelers, uh, some parts of the game played horrible. They was getting three and outs, and Baltimore was basically just bullying them with their defense. They was getting after Ben Roethlisberger, especially in passing situation, and Suggs could not be stopped at uh, points in the game. He was just getting after the offensive line, getting back to the field to stop the run, and also getting pressure on Big Ben. But they finally settled in. They was able to get some key plays going. Also get Le'Veon Bell going to run again as well as the pass game, which he is lethal. And Tony Brown, the best receiver in the game. And they, uh, Baltimore didn't do a good job of doubling up him at the last part of the game, so that was their lacking of heart, yeah, but the Steelers were able to take advantage of what the Baltimore Ravens' weaknesses are on defense and just kept it off with some touchdowns eventually a late field goal. Their defense gave up some big plays, gave up 100 yards to the Ravens, that is concerned, and on third down they gave up another big play. That's also concerned for the Steelers' defense, but overall they was able to make key plays at the moment to win this game, but they better be careful going forward because the game against the Patriots, who came off a loss against the Dolphins, and they are really pissed off. So they better be careful playing against Tom Brady because Tom Brady does have Pittsburgh's number. Ten and two. You, Ten and two against all Steelers. All time. And Gronk's back. And Gronk is back. Thank you. So the Steelers has to be careful of doing that, but overall, they did a good job to win. Baltimore had this game won. Five minutes left at the game one. The offense could not score any more points. They were getting three and outs, couldn't move the ball effectively. Defense gave up too many plays, especially on third down to for a thirty two yard completion to Antonio Brown, which was wide open. The secondary couldn't cover and they couldn't get enough pressure and the special teams was there to make plays, so that was their downfall for losing this game. They had it won, but Baltimore at the end lost it. It wasn't they got outplayed on offense and got outplayed on defense and special teams as well. That cost them again. As well, the Pittsburgh Steelers, with that win against, uh, excuse me, against the Ravens, they would also clinch the AFC North in that game as well. So, congratulations to the Pittsburgh Steelers on a huge win. May not have been the greatest of wins, but it's like they say, a win is a win. And definitely, like you mentioned, um, we're also going to talk about that matchup uh, here in a little bit. Uh, during the podcast, they have a, a, a tough matchup moving forward going against the New England Patriots. So definitely, even though this was not the greatest way for them to win, it definitely has to be some sort of momentum moving forward against a tough opponent like that. With that being said, we're going to jump into the Week 15 matchups as well as give you our professional opinions and predictions on those matchups as well. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump into Week 15 uh, we're going to start off with, this is a huge game for both of these teams. That is the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the L.A. Chargers. Both of these teams are tied for first in the AFC West. Both of the records identical at 7-6. and six. 
the Chiefs are once again at home, so just could play an advantage of them maybe taking a, a, a little bit of a, a separation from the Chargers and sending them in the second place. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, of course, off their win against the Oakland Raiders. They're currently 4-2 and two at home. The Chargers are coming off a win against the Washington Redskins by a score of 30-13 to 13 and are winners of their last four as well. However, the L.A. Chargers are also coming to this matchup 3-3 three and three on the road. Tell me, Mike, what do you like about this matchup? Well, it's a matchup for the AFC West Division, first place. Whoever wins this game will likely win the division and have a home playoff in the wild card week. Both teams just come in with expectation that everything's riding on this game. They're going to be going after each other. It's going to be a very close game. It's going to be exciting. The Red Heart Chargers are playing excellent ball off, especially on defense with Ingram and Bosa, one of the uh, best one-two punch pass rushers in the game. It's just ridiculous how they can get to the quarterback. And the special teams is playing well. The Chargers is clicking on all cylinders and playing good football. They did have some back breaks in the first part of the season, but going forward, they got better and they corrected and they're still in the playoff run. They could possibly, potentially beat the Chiefs for the AFC West crown. For the Chiefs, they have to start fast and explosive on offense. They have to be aggressive. They can't let up and they can't uh, make mistakes because if you do, the Chargers will take advantage of it and make you pay for it. So the, if the offense gets going, the defense gets going, also the special teams get going, the Chiefs will have a chance to win this game. I'm going to ask you this. Uh, like you mentioned, um, and we discussed this with the Chiefs last game, Al Smith threw no touchdown passes in this game. What can they do to get him going and, and find a rhythm against this crucial game for them to once again uh, more than likely win the AFC West? Uh, go back to a few years, like some New Orleans Saints states with Jimmy Graham. Have, Ch have Kelsey played a part of Jimmy Graham. Uh, use him more as a receiver, split him out, put him in motion maybe. Um, Got to get Travis Kelsey going to the passing game there. He listed as a tight end, but he's uh, he's more of a Jimmy Graham type of tight end there for him, though. At and, least uh, he can block. He, he, he can block. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. But uh, they get that passing game going. They can bring Kelsey down to block afterwards. They get Kareem Hunt going after that, though. They'll also open up guys like Hill. Guys like Wilson, whoever else, but they they, they, they got to get they ain't gonna be game breakers. Put him in motion, run some outs, get him the ball in space, just get him the ball. They ain't gonna be big plays. Get him the ball, get that passing game going. Everything is fall to place. I just want to ask you this: Is Philip Rivers? It seems like whether he's at home or he's on the road. I don't know what it is about the Kansas City Chiefs, but Philip Rivers likes to show out in games against Kansas City. Do you expect him to have a big game against Kansas City? I expect both teams to have big games against each other. It's everything's on the line. It's going to be close and tight, and there's going to be a lot of points for it. I don't expect Phillip Rivers to have a big game. I expect both Alex Smith and Phillip Rivers to have a big game in this part to see which uh, team will win. So everything's on the line. First place is on the line. So you win, you're more likely to win the division. So it's all or nothing. Both teams. Schedule makers nailed this one, put it on Saturday night, didn't they? Oh, yes, they did. <laughs> Prime time. I'm going to jump into the second matchup. I like this one as well. And we talked about this previously. Uh, talking about the Steelers and Ravens. Pittsburgh Steelers, New England Patriots. This is definitely a heavyweight fight if you want to if you want to call it that for sure. Ben Roethlisberger, of course, had 506 yards passing in the previous game as well as four touchdowns. We'll see if he's able to do that against the Brady Bunch in the New England Patriots. Um, New England, first in the AFC West with a record of 10-3, or excuse me, AFC East, excuse me, coming off a loss, like you mentioned, against the Miami Dolphins by a score of 27-20. to 20. They are, however, an impressive 6-1 on the road. The Pittsburgh Steelers currently at 11-2 and two on the season. They're currently first in the AFC North, and they are coming off a win, like we just talked about, between uh, the Baltimore Ravens by a score of 39-8. They are 5 and 1 at home as they are hosting the Wingham Patriots. Luke, what do you like about this match? Everything. Everything. Uh, heard some people saying, uh, you know, off the record that uh, maybe this game maybe lost a little bit of lust with the Patriots losing. I couldn't disagree with that. The more I think the Patriots losing actually adds to the stakes because, yeah, it'd be kind of cool that both still only had the two losses going head to head at Pittsburgh or whatever else. But uh, I think you now you, you're doing that loss Monday night. Mike touched on it earlier how you know how, how much more dialed in the focus than already dialed in the focus Patriots team is to begin with. 
I mean, you throw in the fact that just one of these teams is just that much more desperate than before Monday night. Just unbelievable. Um, I, I think if uh, Ben has to throw for over 500 yards again, that's I don't think it's a really a, a week to week recipe. I mean, it's it, nice to have a quarterback in there for a game. They got uh, that. Bell had the first two touchdowns with the 14 of the need against the Ravens last Sunday. Uh, they got to get Bell going again, early again. Got to keep feeding him though. Um, 66 pass attempts is way too many. They throw the ball 66 times to the Patriots. They're they're going to lose by two scores or more. Do you think because of their offense, Mike? If I'm going to ask you, do you think that kind of made that kind of makes at least moving forward their offense a little bit of a, have a little bit of a predictability to it? You can say that. For um, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they have to watch tape of what Miami did to New England Patriots, especially on defense. They blitzed up the middle, caused Tom Brady to go outside of his corner side out of the pocket to throw bad passes and all. And the secondary has to step up big against uh, Rob Gronkowski, newly re-signed to the Patriots, Kenny Britt, Chris Hogan. And you, Danny Amendola, you also have to watch out for the speedster and uh, Brandon Cooks who can get by you with your quickness. And offense, you have to score early against this depleted Patriots defense. Even though they got better, they still have some struggles, especially in the secondary. So you can get find some holes there and get it going, then uh, you possibly get the win for the Patriots. This, that loss against Miami stinged them so bad it had Belichick so hot. Is hell week for them. I wouldn't want to be in the locker room with Bill Belichick at all because special teams, offensive defense did horrible against the Miami Dolphins. So they have to go back to the fundamentals of football, which uh, he will touch on. But against the Dolphins, they have Ronkowski, who served in one game suspension. On uh, defense, they have Kyle Van Noy. Trade flowers or other key parts on that defense that couldn't generate that pass rush that they have. But if they get those players back and healthy, this could be huge against the Pittsburgh Steelers, especially that high power offense like they have. So if the defense can get some pressure apply it on Ben Robinsburg and force him to throw ugly passes, then they can find their chances to win. But the Patriots secondary are good enough to stop Steeler off, especially you're going to see Malcolm Butler versus Antonio Brown matchup again, and Butler has had success against Antonio Brown, he's a scrappy little receiver, he's a scrappy cornerback, excuse me, but he'll match up against Antonio Brown, you also got Gilmore, who can match up tall against uh, Martavius Bryant, and you have Jones, a rookie, who's starting to come in his own, can match up against Juju Smithster and all those type of weapons. So I think the New England Patriots will find some wrinkles that Pittsburgh still has ne never seen and get after their offense. Now for the Patriots offense, they're going to be one to score points. They're not going to be like, we're not going to settle for field goals. Let's score touchdowns and win this game on the road because they are playing for first place for the home events throughout the playoffs. You also get Grunk back, have your Grunk back, you can stretch that middle part and create one-on-one -on -one matches on the outsides where you can have Kutch going up against uh, Burns or Hogan against another one of their secondary. So it's huge for the Patriots to have Grunk back because they was depleted without Grunk on Monday. Absolutely. So if one added them back, this would be a key factor in their offense to get the running game going. So that's going to be the part that plays in the role in this game. Uh, one thing I want to ask you, Luke, is do you think this game right here could eventually predict who actually represents the AFC uh, going into the Super Bowl? It's a really unique situation, this game right here, because when you're, when you're asking you know, someone who you think is going to win this Sunday, you're basically asking who you think is going to lose the AFC Championship game. Winner of this game is going to probably have home field. I don't know if the home field is going to really make that much of a difference. So these are two Titans that are playing each other. Can, can you fathom either of these teams losing twice to the same team in a year? Not really. So, in, in, a, in a weird kind of way, it's almost like the loser of this game would have an edge in a rematch because they're probably not going to get swept, for lack of a better term. So, it's a very very unique situation to match up right here. I definitely like this matchup. This actually might have to be my favorite matchup of the week by far. This is definitely going to be knockdown, knockdown physical. 
And this is going to be a hard prediction. I'll definitely say nonetheless. This is going to be a fantastic game. Student and pupil, Tomlin versus Vilicek. It has everything you want in a great matchup. I can't wait to see how this one turns out. Uh, the third matchup we're going to talk about is the L.A. Rams taking on the Seattle Seahawks. The Seattle Seahawks are going to be at home in this matchup. Uh, the Rams are currently 9-4. Um, they're coming off a tough loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, once again, the Rams are 5-1 on the road. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks are 8-5, second in the AFC West. Um, they're coming off a tough loss to the Jacksonville Jaguars by a score of 30-24, and they are currently 4-2 at home. Mike, what do you like about this matchup? Well, Seattle's got a taste in them, a nasty taste in their mouth because they lost a close game on the road. And if Russell Wilson wouldn't throw one, if he didn't throw one of those two interceptions, they probably would win this game. But they got to a slow, sluggish start and it took them a while to get them going. So they have to start fast, they have to start aggressive, and they have to strike their first blow by scoring the first points of the game. Like the Eagles game all over again. Exactly. So, whoever scores first in this game, more likely will win this game. So, they have to get back to basics on offense. And that offense line has to do better protecting Russell Wilson in the pocket, which has been an issue all season long. And the playmakers had to step up and make plays. And there were some key drop passes that lost in this game as well. And defense has to be able to play better. They have to be able to control their emotions and play with and they actually play with some energy because you saw that lack, lack of defense play of Seattle. So if they could get back to being who they are, now I could see them being dominant as they once were. It's in the backfield for them since they do to injuries. So if they can get back to playing their Seattle defense, which I know they're capable of, they'll be able to win this game at home. Uh, you know, L.A. Ram offense, they've been putting up some eye-popping numbers this game, uh, this year. Even in defeating the Eagles, they had, what, 30, 35 points, I believe? Um, they, they, they had, like, a, a string of games where they scored, like, 50 points in a row, two, three games in a row, I believe. Um, just some of the better teams that have struggled a little bit. Vikings only held them to seven. Uh, when they played the Falcons, or excuse me, when they played the Seahawks, only scored ten on them. Um, a little bit of a misleading ten points that game. They, uh, Earl, Earl, Earl Thomas made... Perhaps to play the season on a girly from remember, you know, like Tomahawk and the ball at the pylon. But yeah. if uh, if that rookie uh, Cooper Cup, oh, I was dropped. just getting to that. Yeah. Eight, about eight seconds to go in the game, hit him right, hit him right in stride, right in the end zone. They win. Well, would have tied the game 16-16, extra point pending. Probably win the game 17-16. So a little bit of a misleading ten points they had there, and that was with a pretty much full straight Seahawk. Day. I think even Cliff Avery was still healthy then too. So, but. Playing a game in Seattle, that's just, that's just a different monster right there. Even though they've lost a couple of home games this year, um, hey, you can pretty much, uh, you look at the two games they lost at home. They, uh, they lost by three to the Redskins, where the kicker missed three field goals, and they lost by three to the Falcons, where I I'm still not sure what they were doing the end of the half there. Um, it's going to be a very interesting matchup. It's, uh, as I mentioned before, a very uh, passing of the torch game with the Rams win. I absolutely agree. It's a huge NFC West showdown between both of these teams. Um, once again, the Rams are currently first in the NFC West, so this game, uh, win or lose, could actually make a difference in whoever takes that conference, Mike. Uh, this is going to come down to the last play of the game. Whoever makes the last play of the game, offense and defense will win the game. That's pretty much my point. All right, Rams and Seahawks, once again, this could possibly uh, dictate who takes control of that NFC West. Uh, we're going to get into the fourth and final matchup, and that is the Dallas Cowboys, Mike's favorite team, taking on <laughs> taking on the Oakland Raiders. Uh, the Oakland Raiders will be at home hosting the Cowboys. Uh, the Cowboys are currently 7-6. and six. Uh, They're 4-2 on the road uh, going into Oakland. They are second in the NFC East and are fresh off of a victory against the New York Giants by a score of 30-10, to 10, and they are also winners of the last two games. Uh, the Raiders are currently 6-7. Uh, four and three at home on the season. Um, they're currently third in the FC West. Uh, they lost to the Chiefs, like we mentioned earlier, by a score of 26 to 15, and ending a potential three-game run, which could have been uh, definitely quite the uh, momentum shifter for them uh, going into this game. However, they are at home. Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be the uh, the last game the Cowboys play without Ezekiel Elliott. He'll uh, be back the following weekend in Seattle for a Christmas Eve game. Uh, Cowboys got to be looking forward to that. Um, 
not only did they win their last two games, they won their last two games, but I believe they combined 68 to 24. Uh, 38 14 over the Skins, 30 to 10 over the Giants. Uh, the game was at New York. Manny was back in the starting lineup. That's neither here nor there, though. Uh, the thing that kind of alarms me with the, uh, with the Cowboys here is uh, they played the Redskins game at home. Then they had to go to New York. Now they're going to Oakland. Now, they're saving grace that the Thursday night game, the game against the Redskins was a Thursday night. They had kind of a quasi bye weekend there to get ready for it. But uh, does it change the fact they're going from New York to Oakland in a week? And that's, that's going to be kind of tough for a team that's, uh, you know, centrally stationed. Yeah, that is a big difference maker going from East Coast to West Coast in the past of the two weeks. But for the Cowboys to win, they have to keep duplicating what they're doing, run the ball effectively, get five or six yards there, keep the clock going, and get Des Bryant going early in the passing game against Oakland. Oakland doesn't have an answer for him. I, that, I, that's, that's their biggest matchup for Dallas. I don't think Oakland's cover him. That I was getting ready to get to that and this uh, depleted secondary of Oakland. If they can gener uh, if they can get that going and get Cole Beasley going and get Jason Mill uh, Whitten going in the middle, then they'll be able to wear down Oakland's defense now for the Cowboys defense. They have to stop the run. They have to stop Marshawn Lynch because Marshawn Lynch can break tackles like an name nuts, especially with his running style. So if they stop him, they can force Oakland to be a one-dimensional offense to where they can take advantage of some turnovers. So if they can do that, that will be fine for the Oakland Raiders who's coming off the loss on the road. They have to play with urgency because their playoff lives is at stake. You have to win out these last three games to get some help to get into the wild card week in the playoffs. So they have to beat Marshawn Lynch the ball early and wear it down this Cowboys defense and go after the secondary. And you have to get Amari Cooper going early because he's kind of having a down season. So what I'm seeing, get him going early, get Jerry Cook going if he can catch the ball. And also, you have to get Crabtree going, who's had one of his better seasons. So if you get them three going, Oakland should be all right to win this game, especially if they're at home. For the defense, is a concern because their secondary can't stop nobody. So they have to be aggressive and man up and jam and be physical with the Dallas Cowboys receiver. And that front seven has to be able to generate with the pass rush. Khalil Mack can't do it all his own. Uh, Bruce Irvin has to step up and make plays along with the other front seven guys. And you have, if they can do that, then they can stop the Cowboys and they can win this game at home. Pretty much everything that he just said there. They, uh, Des Brown's going to be a matchup nightmare for him. Uh, but uh, Raiders, uh, Raiders last home. And not so much as asking about Kansas City, but the week before that, they, uh, they really had Marshawn Lynch going. He, uh, he had, uh, without question, against the, uh, I believe against the Giants, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. yeah. He had, on question, his best game as a Raider. They uh, got to get him going again. Uh, not for nothing, but Dallas plays on the fake stuff. They're going to be playing on natural grass. So okay. it's something to keep an eye on. So definitely a crucial game for both of these teams. Uh, once again, the Raiders 4-3 at home. Um, being at home, hopefully that can, they can use that to an advantage against um, also a, a surging uh, Seattle Seahawks team. With that being said, we're going to jump into our predictions portion of the podcast. And we're going to start with the Chargers and Chiefs. Chiefs at home in Arrowhead. Who do you like with? Uh, we got a 5-0 and team playing an 0-4 team, oddly enough. <laughs> I, uh... Vegas actually has this one as a pick em with the over-under at 46, so by that logic, um, Vegas is predicting a 23-23 tie. Uh, I, I'm not going to go 23-23, I actually think the Chargers are going to win 27-23. I like the Chargers to go to Arrowhead and uh, keep keep it going on. Uh, my concern with the Chiefs is I think they're winning against the Raiders, maybe a little bit of fool's gold. Uh, I'm not sure that the Chiefs beat the Raiders, I think the Raiders beat the Raiders, and I, I wasn't really impressed with either team in that game. Chargers, there's very little to not like about them right now. I, 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 I got to go with the trick. I know it's December, Kansas City, cold, L.A., whatever else. I, I'll go with the Chargers 27-23. Um, I had a little tough time with this one. But after getting that win in weeks, I think they feed off of that. I see the Chiefs getting the win at home in a close game. Like I was saying earlier, you have to get Kareem Hunt going in the running game. The offense line has to play better. Alex Smith has to make better choices. The uh, offense coordinator has to open up the playbook more. You have to get 
Tyreek Hill going to pass game as well as Travis Kelsey to pass game in the middle. If they can do that, then they will open up the scoreboard and win. That defense has to make plays and stop on people on third downs, and which I think they'll be able to do because the chief secondary kind of has Phil Rivers' number, if I'm not mistaken. So I would say the Chiefs win close at home with a score of 27-24. Um, I agree. I think this is definitely a tough one to pick. Um, this is crucial, and I think the Chiefs, they have to take advantage of being at home. I mean, you're basically taking the lead of the AFC West if you win this year. You're going into this game, and that home crowd makes a difference. A win also gives them a sweep. Absolutely. And they're 4-2 at home. Um, what actually could make a difference, the Chargers are 3-3 three and three on the road, so that could make a huge difference. I just think there's a lot of momentum going the Chiefs' way. I agree. I think it is going to be a close game as well. I'm going to say this is going to be a tough one. I'm going to say 27-24. I will say Alex Smith. I can't see him being at home with the division on the line and not scoring a single touchdown. If, if not, he has a lot of questions to answer, and so does Andy Reid. I think he'll definitely get a bulk of those questions as well. I like the Chiefs winning in this spot for uh, the second matchup we're going to discuss would be the Steelers and the Patriots. Mike, who do you got? I got the Patriots to win this one because they're pissed off about that Dolphins loss. They can, had a chance to come back. They ain't making up plays. I feel like with Belichick at the helm, they'll get after his players this week and they'll make some adjustments here and there because one thing about the Patriots, they don't run the same stuff every week. And They'll catch Pittsburgh slipping because in history's past, Tom Brady has the Pittsburgh's number 10 to 2 all time. And plus, they're going to have the running backs take advantage of the linebackers. I, I failed to mention what well, I have Ryan Shazier at that middle part. That middle part is going to get exploited. And I feel like you have Ron Krakowski on top of that to go to that middle part. And I see them taking advantage of with a deep pass to Brandon Cooks for a touchdown over that middle part. I think the defense will play better and they'll play more physical. But I can't see the Patriots losing, losing back to back games, especially when everything is on the line. When everything's on the line, that's when you get the best out of the Patriots. It'll be a plus one, so I'll say the New England Patriots went on the road to score of 31-24. to 24. Uh, Mike made a lot of good points right there. Um, Patriots have lost, I believe, four out of five at Miami, so I'm not really too alarmed by that. I think the one time they did it was last year. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they had won 14 consecutive road games, bookended by Miami losses. Um, so... Uh, I don't. I, you can't tell me that they're going to win 14 consecutive road games and they're just going to lose two in a row. Um, they're a three-point favorite. Um, again, using my uh, matrix, for, uh, you know, metrics from before, Vegas basically uh, with an over and under 53, picking the Patriots to win 20 to 25. Go by that logic. Um, biggest thing for the Patriots, though, they uh, they, they they just kind of. I mean, they did whatever they wanted to the Steelers in the AFC Championship game last year. Uh, Patriots, I mean, the Steelers think they can beat the Patriots. Patriots know they can beat the Steelers. They know they can dominate them. They know they can just put the hurt down on them guys. Uh, home or away, you mentioned the 10-2 for Tom Brady there. Uh, I, whether it's two in a row on the road or two in a row in general, I just I can't fathom the Patriots doing that. Steelers were now 17-3 to the Colts. They, they needed overtime or near overtime to beat the Packers with Hunley quarterback at home. Uh, they blew a two touchdown lead last time to the Ravens. Uh, a two touchdown lead turned to an 11 point deficit. Um, all signs point to the Patriots, and that's that, that's the route I'm going to go on. So I think the Patriots win. I'm going to say third. I think they double them up 34 uh, 17. Patriots know how to take care of business. The Steelers on a paper tiger. I think that's a little bit of an insulting term. But whatever the next level over a paper tiger is, that's what they are. And uh, I, th I think the Patriots, with Gronk making the lot, as you mentioned earlier, Shazier's out, as you mentioned. 34-17 Patriots win. And also, the Steelers, their defense is good, but they overdo it, and they're over-aggressive, and they miss a lot of tackles. And that's some of the part that if you miss a lot of tackles against the Patriots, they will definitely beat you down and take advantage of it. I'm going to have to agree with both. I think you both had fantastic points, and I agree that everything would have to point to the Patriots. Like we just mentioned, I, I don't think anybody that's a football fan even if they're not a fan of the Patriots, I, nobody can see Tom Brady losing two in a row on the road. Like, I can't see it. And whenever the Patriots lose, they do come back with the vengeance. Whoever their next opponent is, I you don't want to be them. Absolutely. 
and I think every mistake that they made against the Dolphins, they will correct it. Um, I think Ben Roethlisberger will play solid, but I just don't see a 506-yard performance against the Patriots. Not just to say it's saying that that has to be done in order for them to win, but I just think the Patriots will come out better prepared. Um, once again, like we mentioned, Gronk will be back once again, so they can't space that defense. I like the Patriots winning at home. The Patriots are always just as comfortable on the road as they are at home. I think they're as deadly on the road as they are at home. Uh, despite, even though the Pittsburgh Steelers are 5-1 at home, I'm going to give this one to the Patriots as well. Um, I think it's going to be a good game, but I think it's going to uh, start in the second half as far as the Patriots just basically making their separation from the Steelers. I'm going to say this one is going to be a score of 28-14. to 14. Yep, and also... The Steelers have been winning. You notice the last five games or six games, they've been won by nail biters. I think this comes back to Hanna because if you make a mistake, especially against Tom Brady, kiss a goodbye. Mm -hmm. This isn't the Colts. It's not the Packers. It's not no disrespect. It's not the Ravens either. This is just the New England Patriots. It's, it's on. Exactly. Um, I mean, one last question I want to ask the both of you before I jump into the third matchup. Do you think that this is, like we mentioned, um, 11-2 season. They had a great turnaround in what seemed like this could be a disaster of a season for the Pittsburgh Steelers, so definitely give them credit where credit is due. But do you think that this is basically the first true test that they've had in quite some time? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Ever since the debacle against Jacksonville, this will be a true test uh, for the Steelers to knock off the Patriots for home field advantage. Uh, certainly the most complete test, too. I, I don't think the win is as good defensively as Jackson's on this, so you can actually make a case that they, they've had a, a true test and uh, failed miserably in that, for that matter, but uh, mo most complete team they played, no doubt. Steelers, Patriots, this is, I think this is definitely going to be a put-up or shut-up game. I think, definitely think for both of these teams, nonetheless, but we both definitely think we all agree that the Patriots will come out on top and improve to 7-1 on the road. Uh, the third prediction that we're going to discuss, the L.A. Rams, Seattle Seahawks, might be right. I like the Seahawks winning at home because they're coming off a uh, loss where they had a chance to win. Russell Wilson didn't have his best performance, but he kind of made it up. But at the end, he's going to deliver. I've seen him perform at home, especially that loud crowd noise is going to be energetic and everything's on the line. I say Seattle will show up on offense, defense, and special teams to win this game. The, it's going to be close to type, but I see the Seahawks walking away uh, with this win with the uh, touchdown to late field goal. So I'm going to say the score of the Seattle Seahawks went 30-20 to 20 over the Los Angeles Rams. Uh... You look at that last Seahawks game against the Jaguars. I mean, they, they had guys get ejected. They just had an absolute total meltdown. Sheldon Richardson, Quentin, Quentin Jefferson, and whoever else. Uh, Bennett, to the surprise of no one, that makes everything there. Um, but Seattle has, a, for, for, for a team that just had a, a total and epic collapse on the sideline of a, a rather a tough, close defeat like that, there, there, there's not a better coach in the NFL more equipped to handle a set situation than Pete Carroll. He knows how to rally the troops. He's, uh, he's put it out there today. Blair Walsh is our guy. He's not holding a 38 chip shot, a 30 yard chip shot missing against him either. Great mechanics, he says. He believes in his. No other coach in the league believes in their players as much as Pete Carroll believes in his coach. Since they drafted Russell Wilson, you look at the Seahawks in the month of November, December. They've had a few hiccups this year, you know, kind of, you know, unbecoming of them. Fantastic, you know, the last second half, eight games of the season there. Fantastic home record no matter what time of the year is. But they've already lost two games at home. They're going to lose three. I, I, I can't I, I can't fathom that. That's I mentioned earlier the stadium. I mentioned earlier the Rams still trying to learn how to win. Rams will have a two game lead with two to go. The Seahawks will tie it with a sweep, so they theoretically have a one game lead in that regard. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go with the Seahawks 20, 23 17 Seattle in this one. Uh, the Rams just quite aren't there yet. Just quite, and, and no suspensions from the Jacksonville game for Seattle. I, I can't emphasize how important that is for them. 23-17 Seattle, they, they, they get the win, they tie it up first place. Absolutely. I mean, great turnaround, no question about it, for the Rams. Uh, moving to L.A. has definitely seemed to do something. Of course, uh, they had a coaching change. Jeff Fisher was uh, previously their coach. Uh, it seemed like they're getting things together. Um, I agree with you. Um, Seattle at home, this is where we see Seattle at their best, especially under Pete Carroll. He knows about latency. He knows about the playoffs. They've been there. This is nothing new to them with having... 
you know, with, with game situations like that. Ever since Russell Wilson was drafted by the Seahawks, they're always in the playoffs. And have won a game. They've gone two and won at least one playoff game every year. So I'm going to say, I think the Seahawks will go ahead and take this one at home. I'm going to give them a score of 27 to 20. Unanimous decision pick. It's, it's a tough one. I mean, no doubt about it. But I just think, uh, I mean, Seattle this time of year, they they know what they're doing. I kind of wish somebody would have picked the Rams now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. All right, fourth and final prediction, Cowboys and Raiders. Who do you got? Uh, I said it a few times already that that Raiders secondary, they already fired a defensive coordinator. They don't have, I mean, they're... Their linebackers are good, not great. I, I really can't even name anybody outside of Bruce Irvin. Um, the front seven is okay. The, the, they, they have nothing to say to the position right now. Quite, and, and, and secondary as a whole right now. Um, this might be Des Bryant's last chance at a great game in his career. Like, I don't mean like, you know, seven catches, 110 yards and a touch. I mean, this is his last chance to go 11 for 210 and three touchdowns. This is his last chance to really have that 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 game, that big time numerical game for him. I don't know that he's gonna go, you know, for eleven to two ten like I decided to kind of throw that metaphorically. But uh I think he gets his numbers, he gets his he gets his catches, he gets his yards. Raiders I think are gonna fall behind somewhat early. He's gonna take Marshall Lynch out of the game. He's gonna take the black hole out of the game. Uh Cowboys win this one uh, I'm gonna say twenty twenty to sixteen. Um, much as I love to hate the Cowboys and all that, and it's all in fun. Just I'm just saying, it's all in fun. It's not serious, all that. It's just all in fun. But history repeats itself. It's true facts. Some tells me I want to lead towards the Cowboys because of his points. But I'm gonna go the other side and pick Oakland at home to win this game because everything is riding for them. Last few spots of the playoffs is all or nothing. Oakland has to win out to get in the playoffs. If they lose one out of these three games, they're done. So they have to win out. I think their defense is going to get up yards and points, no doubt about that. But I think that with that home crowd, and they'll be able to play, make one or a few plays here to win the game. I see Khalil Mack getting a huge sack fumble to win the game. And also, the offense, I can see Derek Carr getting into field goal range to give them to win. So, I would say a close type game, but I say the Oakland has nothing to lose. It's all or in. They're still in the playoff hunt. So, I kind of say they're kind of going to ruin the Dallas Cowboys season with the win of, I'm going to say, 26-24. This is this is definitely a tough one. I mean, this is a must win for both of these teams. Like you mentioned, the Oakland Raiders are literally fighting for their playoff lives, and this is a crucial, crucial pickup win for them potentially by being at home and hosting Dallas Cowboys. They're still without some crucial pieces. Uh, once again, uh, Ezekiel Elliott is out for uh, his final uh, yeah. game yeah. of serving his suspension. Man, this is tough. But I'm I'm honestly going to have to say. I agree with you. I think it is going to be close. Um, I do like the Oakland Raiders at home just because I think they understand what is on the line. I think their car will be solid. I think Marshawn Lynch, I just think he's too physical. I think he will have two rushing touchdowns in this game. I think um, they, they understand if they lose this game and at home, I really don't see them don't doing see anything at this point to make it to the postseason. So I'm going to say the Raiders. Ooh. I'm going to say by a score of 35 to 28, I think it's going to be a great game. <coughs> Excuse me. I think Dak Prescott will come out. I think he'll have a solid game. But I think just that missing piece of that ground attack could be the thing that actually ends up costing them when it counts the most. I think it's going to be a move forward regardless. You, uh, you look at the uh, Raiders, they uh, play at Philadelphia, then at San Diego to finish the season. Cowboys, meanwhile, they played the, they, they, they host the Seahawks before uh, going to Philadelphia to finish the season. So it might be the last one of the year for any of these teams. It's a... It's a brutal schedule for these two teams, but with Des raising calls for desperate measures, I think Oakland can come up and live up to that desperation expectation. So I'm rolling with the Raiders to win at home. I expect B Smoke to be B Smoke like he was in Seattle. He knows the time. Of I expect him to play. The NFL is better with B Smoke in. I strongly agree with that. His point. 
Alright, for that being said, social media. You can follow us at Facebook, Gameball College Kickoff slash Gameball NFL Zone. Twitter at Gameball, all capitalized, G-A-M-E-B-A-L-L underscore capital M. Y K E that's Mike. We also have an official Twitter page you can go to as well. All caps at G C K underscore G N F L E. Same with Instagram. All caps G C K underscore G N F L E. Email G C K dot G N F L E at Gmail dot com. YouTube our channel. Like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. G C K dot G N F L E T V. Your social media. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Marcus Jovel NT Jenkins, and also you can always follow me on Twitter as well under at Jovel NT, all one word. Follow me on Facebook at Luke Hartnett. I'm on Twitter at Luke Hartnett 2. Alright, right, with that being said, that does conclude this week 15 edition of Game Ball Info End Zone. Um, on the next podcast, we're going to look out for our recap of week 15, and we'll talk about the top four matchups that we'll have for you in week 16. That being said, it's been one. Once again, coming live from Stonewall Pizza in Lawrence, Kansas. That is 1008 Match Street. Once again, we are definitely proud to be partners with them as well. We definitely yeah. appreciate them. We'd like to say thank you to Seth and Joe for letting us use this place as our official venues as well. So big up to him. Give a little clap for that. Don't forget Wednesdays, come out, talk football with us, have price pizzas. Once again, if you're a college student, Mondays, 40% off of your pizza as well. Come out, hang out with us here right on Game Ball Info End Zone. I'm Michael Riley. I'm Mark Hartley. And, <laughs> and I'm Marcus Young Genius Jenkins, and we are out. Have a safe night and peace.